This excerpt was taken from the Full and Bloom interview with guitarist Mick Sweeta. You can listen to more excerpts at fullandbloom.com. You said that you worked with Gene. I'm sorry, I, I didn't uh, find that in your history. What, what did you work with him on? Well, nothing really came of it. Later on, after, uh, I believe, Mark uh, had left the band, perhaps even Johnny. Uh, I don't even know if he was in the band at that point before going off to join Wasp. But Carmine, uh, you know, the band was kind of in trouble and trying to keep its head above water. And Carmine was pretty much willing to do anything to, uh, you know, secure some kind of a deal and keep it going. So he got in touch somehow with Gene, or Gene got in touch with him. And we ended up recording a couple of uh, songs that he and Paul had written, I guess. And, uh, you know, he came down to the session as we were recording those. And uh, it was fun. We got into a conversation about our uh, mutual admiration for horror films. And, you know, he's, he's a very cool guy. And I remember going up, uh, we went up to his house one time in Benedict Canyon here in uh, Beverly Hills. And I think at the time, maybe he was considering signing us to Simmons Records, something. I'm not sure what he was calling it at the time. Um, so, yeah, I mean, nothing ever really came of that. Um, Probably be that's a good thing, but uh, I split the band shortly after that. So that's like the tale. And Mark Free's gone, and Mark Torin is it Torin? Is that how you say his last name? Uh, I think he says Tori Tor, Torin. So Mark Torin yeah. is uh, the vocalist by then. Yeah, he's a singer, and Lonnie is playing bass at that point. Oh wow. Okay, so then that transitions into, and I know when I, that was another thing when I interviewed David, he had said that he was actually in the band or or in that early version of Bullet Boys, but he didn't get along with Mark. Yeah, that's a common theme. Um, I could see that, uh, see where the path was leading, and I said, look, I'm, I'm going to take off, and I said to Mark and Lonnie, you know, I, I want to start a new band, I want to you know, all we need really is a drummer. Why don't you guys come with me? And they were both to a man, uh, responded with, well, this is our big band. You know, we just got in this band and we want to see it through and, and this could be huge and we want to keep going. This is, you know, this is like our dream, right? As opposed to just going back into the streets of Hollywood and trying to start over. So I said, okay, well, I totally get it. That's cool. I'm going to go and, uh, I'll audition guys, you know, so I got in my little apartment and started auditioning players and writing songs. And, uh, shortly after that, they came around and, uh, realized, you know, that that wasn't going anywhere. And, uh, that's when we got started with, uh, Bullet Boys. And yeah, the first couple of rehearsals, I remember, uh, Dave came down, but, uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's probably correct when he says he had a hard time getting along with Mark. That's, that's a very familiar story. I'm assuming he would have already known that with working with him in King Cobra, right? Oh, yeah. Mark, definitely, uh, his character came through uh, almost immediately upon joining that band. It was very obvious that he, uh, you know, he was a troubled cat. So, uh, but, you know, I mean, Dave uh, was willing to give it a try. You know, sometimes, uh, sometimes that's the only way a band will stay together. You know, it's just, and I can speak from personal experience, you know, you have to overlook things. You have to, you know, come to grips with certain elements of personalities. And, uh, you know, that's the difference between the 1% of bands that succeed and the 99% that don't, you know, something uh, bothers you or something gets under your skin. It's way easier to just quit and walk off and never make it happen. But, you know, you have to make the determination. Is this thing that I'm a part of worth holding together, even if I have to sacrifice, you know, what I believe to be my principles. And, you know, that's the decision I made. You know, Dave didn't uh, want to deal with that. He ended up going in a very different direction. The stuff you're able to overlook was just based on because you believed in his voice, right? Yeah. And that's a good way to look at it. You know, his voice was stronger than the weakness of his character. And so when you say that he's troubled, what was he like to work with? Well, I, you know, I'm not going to bag on the guy. Um, he uh, has, um, you know, as, as 
someone to work with, you know, certainly he at that point had a great voice and he could sing virtually anything. Um, but you know, stylistically we were very different. Um, I have uh, a different approach to, you know, lyrical content and, and I have a, a work ethic that is, is very different from a lot of people. I'm willing to put in the, the hours and, and do the work that's necessary. And, uh, you know, that was critical to this band getting where it got, you know, because, uh, not everybody has that kind of, you know, desire to put in the time and effort. So, uh, yeah, without going into too much detail, um, yeah, we were just very different people and, and, uh, that we got as far as we did. I like to think is, uh, you know, in spite of him, <laughs> Did he write all the lyrics? Uh, no, he actually wrote very few lyrics. Most of his ideas had to be finished to a large degree by myself. So then when you say lyrics, then what was the... I thought you said uh, something about him um, writing lyrics that you didn't like or whatever. It was just the fact that... Uh, I mean, you guys wrote stuff like Smooth Up In You and Hard As A Rock. What, what were you guys trying to say? Well... Yeah, don't misunderstand. I mean, the idea of that kind of song, we certainly were on um, on the same page, you know? I mean, uh, we were just a raucous, you know, rock and roll band, and, you know, we made no bones about, uh, you know, writing those kinds of songs, although people like to think that that's all we ever did. You know, I think if you look deeper into our lyrics, you'll realize that's a fallacy. But I'm just, I'm just saying from the point of view of a, uh, you know, a particular line or staying with a train of thought. Um, we were very different in, in that regard, you know, and, and in terms of, uh, you know, the actual lyric writing, most of that was, uh, well, let me just say that, you know, he had some ideas and sometimes those ideas had to be finished or amended. Too 